So we're going to be making this auto spacebar presser thingamabob from scratch. Files will be somewhere. I don't know. Download them from below. So you've already seen the final product. Um, but I'm going to be using Blender. I'm not much of a Tinkercad person, but I am going to try it once again soonish. But Blender is very basic. The fact that we can manipulate every um, vertice. The other thing as well is one Blender unit is one millimeter. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the schematics of the servo. Can't be stuffed measuring it. It's online. Just jumped onto the Core Electronics website. Great company. Just going to save that image back into the blend file. There it is. Click and drag that in just so I've got reference. And so let's just kind of like go ahead and create that box. All I'm going to do is pretty much create this bottom section. So 22.5, 23 by 12.1. 12.5 <laughs> so I'm just going to set the origin point to be in the middle here and now over up here in the top right hand sort top right hand corner I can now kind of create the box how I see fit so uh, along the x-axis we'll go this way 22.5 we said 23 millimeters here we went 12.1 let's go 12 and a half just to give it a little bit of extra wiggle room 12.5 and how high is it um, because we're only grabbing this section, 15.7. Actually, this doesn't matter. We can go 20 mil. And so that is the size of the base. From here, let's just rotate on it sideways. Um, I'm going to have kind of like the motor section here. The other thing that I want to add are the holes. Um, it'll just make my life easier, kind of like when we're screwing it in. So just something to think about. We can see here that the diameter of the holes is 2.2 mil. We'll go 2.5. So shift A, mesh. Let's go into a cylinder. And then the dimensions, let's go 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. And I'm just going to scale it nice and long because we can. Since we made this box uh, 12 and a half mil, half of 12 and a half is 6.25. So along the Y axis, 6.25. Yep, that looks in the middle. Um, just a little bit of maths. So the center points between the holes is 27.7. Let's go 28. 28 is 14. What am I going to do? I'm just going to re-center this box. So convert origin to geometry for now. Alt R, Alt G to reset it in the world location because I'm feeling a bit lazy. Let's go Alt G on that puppy as well. And then I'm going to put this at minus 14. Duplicate that and we'll put that at plus 14. So now technically we've got holes in the right spot. Um, now I can select both of these, Control J to join. So now it's just one mesh. And this is almost gonna be like my cutter. So I'm gonna make this just kind of cut into the plate. I mean, we're doing something that's super basic. From here, I'm gonna create our actual base of our object. So let's scale that puppy. Scale it by five, scale it by 10. So if we have a look, this cube is two centimeters by two centimeters by two centimeters. That's all right. Might just make it a smidge bigger by scaling along the Z axis to 1.5. Let's put an edge loop down here. So with the control R, just adding some extra geometry. And I'm just gonna make it minus 13. Um, and then that way it's kind of like this two millimeter plate. We can grab this and I might go extrude 50. So extrude that by 50 mil. And then I'm also gonna give it a little bit of support on this side, E to extrude. 10 millimeters. So we've got something like that. Now I am always thinking about 3D printing. And so this is the way I'm gonna 3D print it. So it's on kind of like a flat surface. Um, and because we're gonna have a hole cut in here. Yeah, no supports. Excellent, good thinking Marco. Um, let's now grab this surface and bring it back because obviously the motor is bigger than this hole. So let's just go GX 20. And so that means now when we kind of like put this into place, like about here-ish. That should give us plenty of room. I am actually gonna bring this surface back. Now for the reason is, the bottom of the server, if we kind of actually have a look, we've got a wire and we've got plenty of room here. And so, because we're gonna have it sitting like this, <laughs> hold on Marco, because we're gonna be sitting it like this, that cable needs to stick out. Now, with the bull tool enabled, Let's select this, select this, control numpad minus, and we've cut a hole now for where our motor is gonna be, really simple. Now I know from 
this edge here, which is where the keyboard's going to sit against, and to the actual keyboard is about, uh, to the space bar is about 45 mil. Yeah, about 45 mil. So we are gonna have to play a little bit, trying to get uh, maybe the length of our little sticky mabob. We are going to go from the center um, to the edge here. Oh, maths. I'm assuming that if it's 12 mil in thickness, this diameter here is probably 12 mil. Yeah, that looks good. So the radius is six mil. So six mil from the edge, that's where our circle is gonna be. So I think if we make a 50 meter, 50 meter, 50 millimeter arm, we should be fine. So just created a little cylinder for that top bit there. And then I've also done a two millimeter hole here. Just when I put a screw in, it just makes life a lot easier. Select both of them, select our object down here. Control numpad minus, done. Cool, let's export. Very simple, file, export, STL. And we're gonna export these individually. Make sure we go selection only. This one is arm, and then this one here, file, export, STL, uh, body. So I'm just gonna be using the Creality Slicer since I've got a Creality machine. Let's open it up. Select both our objects. And what I wanna do is obviously rotate to the direction I want them to print. I'm gonna select the body. We can go rotate and select the surface that I want lying flat. Select the object, select the surface that we want lying flat, done. Um, from here, just gonna move everything in just so it's a little bit closer. Um, I trust my printer, so I don't need to worry about build plate adhesion, ugh, idiot. Uh, I do leave a skirt on just so it can spit a little bit of plastic out. I like to keep my bed a little bit hotter, but I make this thing go. I'm at the moment at about 130, millimeters a second this is for a cr10 smart pro initial layer though i will keep it at 40 just to start it off make sure we do get that good adhesion and then let it go beautiful thing is is i can now click slice cool we got it in an hour in the bottom right hand corner i can go upload to creality cloud cool upload that to cloud workbench Pick my printer, choose a file, locally upload, keyboard, yes, print. I can't be stuffed going outside. It's cold. There we go. And now I can watch it from the comfort of my home. home. It's like in the garage. So coming back inside, now I did actually have to print with a brim because the pieces are actually pretty small and they didn't stick properly, which is perfectly fine. Doing a quick clean up. Now, I use the pipe deburrer for cleaning up these prints. Oh my goodness, if you don't have a pipe deburrer, get them. Very simple mechanism through the Arduino into a servo, and that servo is gonna go straight into the slot that we created. Now the slot I did make a little bit small, so I had to improvise by shaving off a little bit of um, plastic, and uh, we got it in there. Now, first thing I do is within the Arduino code is I just use the sample one because it's got everything in there. I just changed the variable of which Y is going in. I think I choose chose value six. And then I ended up clearing all the data to make it zero. Now the reason for zero is um, so that I can put this, I know where the servo is. So rather than putting the handle on straight away, because if I were to do that, it might go straight into the wall. I don't know. So doing it like that is a very clever way. And so now from here, screw it on, just to give it a, that extra support on the end. Now cleared out all the previous code and this is where we started inputting all like the values. I just want to move it a little bit just to make sure it's within range and it's not going to break something. Then from here, I started changing up the values to get into the right position. And so we're getting there. However, I noticed that uh, I didn't print the space bar in the right way. So I'm just doing adjusting and then we can see that it's giving me the right angle. And then I just used a peg just to expand it out a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, hey, if it works, it's not stupid if it works. And then we have it, like a thing that pushes the keyboard. Brilliant. And also now Roblox doesn't lock itself up. My son is very happy.